Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to discuss about Saga design pattern. In last few of my videos, I spoke about microservices and building reactive microservices with RevitMQ. And during some of this discussion, I discussed about distributed transaction. Now distributed transaction is something which comes in place when we have multiple services and all the services are single responsibility service or microservices. And then for accomplishing a task, we need to have transaction across all the services. For example, if we are talking about an e-commerce application and in e-commerce application, we have the concept of cart and then we go and do an order. Now, when an order happens, the order goes to the order microservice, which is responsible for executing the order. But after an order is executed, the product microservice also should be updated with the number of products after the execution happens. So in this case, there are two microservices and both needs to update their data based on a single operation. Hence, we would need a distributed transaction across these two services. Whereas if we had a monolithic service instead, then the problem was comparatively easier because they both probably would have been saving data in a single RDBMS database and in which case we could have used a SQL transaction to have a single transaction across the data. Now question why transaction is important? Well, transaction is essentially a single unit of work. And for a transaction to be successful, it must have the ACID properties. And the ACID stands for atomic, consistent, isolated, and durable. Atomic is essentially all the operations must occur or none of them should occur. And that is one of the critical problem with distributed microservice is that how do you ensure all the operations are successful across microservices or none of them, right? So that's one part of the ACID property, which is atomicity. The second one is consistency, means the transaction should have all the data in valid state. There should not be any inconsistency of the data. The third one is isolation. That is, it guarantees that the transaction will not be affected by other calls. And the last one is durability, which basically means that once a transaction is committed, it is not going to be in an inconsistent state afterwards. Meaning if a transaction is committed and for some reason the application broke, the transaction will not be rolled back. So that's the four main properties of a transaction, which is which are the ACID properties. Now let's discuss about what is Saga pattern and where does it come into play. So as I mentioned, managing transaction across multiple microservices in a distributed system is a hard problem to solve. And that is where the Saga pattern comes in. The Saga pattern was introduced to solve this problem of managing distributed transaction. Distributed transaction is actually not a new problem. In the past also, for example, if a particular application needed to update the database, the file system and the message queue or other IO operations as a part of single transaction, we needed some sort of distributed transaction, even in old monolithic application. And if you remember, there is a system called Microsoft Distributed Transaction Coordinator, or it is also called Microsoft DTC. This was one of such product that had promised to solve distributed transaction. Now, I personally have never used it, but I definitely heard about it in a couple of occasions. Due to the birth of microservices, the need for a distributed solution is more evident now than ever. During monolithic application days, we could easily get away, especially when we are dealing with multiple database transactions. But when it comes to microservices era, it is a problem that needs to be solved. Now in Saga pattern, distributed transaction is managed through multiple local transactions in the microservices. 
So as we do today, similarly, each microservice will be responsible for its transaction anyway. But the question that comes is, okay, if each microservice is managing its own transaction, how do we manage distributed transaction? Well, if you think about it, there is only one solution for that. It's basically keeping track of all the transactions in each of the microservices. And then based on the requirement, we figure out whether if one of the transaction fails, what action should be taken? For example, let's consider the example of the e-commerce again. And let's say the e-commerce consists of three services. The first one is the order service, which is responsible for order. Second one is the product service, which is responsible for updating the state of the product. And the third one is email service, which is responsible for sending an email to the user of a confirmed order. Now, in this case, if order is successful, and then we make a call to product, and that is also successful, successful and then finally we make a call to email and the email fails what should be the state of the transaction at this point should we roll back all the transaction or we should retry or we should just move forward and call it a successful transaction well that depends on the requirement of the application and that's why distributed transaction with saga pattern is also not just a technical problem it's a technical as well as business problem meaning we need to understand the requirement to understand how do we implement a distributed transaction. If a transaction inside a microservice fails, so we are talking about a distributed transaction across four or five microservices. Now, one of the microservices fails. Based on the saga pattern, the system should execute rollback for the microservices which have already completed their operations. And by rollback, I mean in the form of a compensating operation. For example, if you are dealing with a database, once that data is inserted part of a service, it will either has an explicit or implicit transaction. And in either case, if the transaction was successful, it is done. There's no way to roll back after that. So the rollback in this scenario is going to be nothing but a compensating operation, meaning we are either going to hard delete or soft delete that row from the database. Or if it is a forward only database, then we are going to have some sort of cancel correct operation. This will make sure that the operations that executed before the failed transaction were rolled back, hence keeping the integrity of the system intact, meaning it will ensure that the system is consistent. So the rollback will ensure the system is consistent. And here the atomicity is also taken care of by this particular implementation. Now, as I mentioned earlier that based on the requirement, we have to decide whether a transaction is critical or not meaning what do we do with the transaction? And based on that, there are three types of transaction that we can define. The first type of transaction are transactions that can potentially be reversed with an operation. As for example, as database entry, just what I mentioned earlier, that if we have a database transaction, part of a microservice, and we went on and did some operation on another microservice and it failed, for the microservice which was responsible for database, it can always do a compensating transaction. And this type of transaction called compensable transaction. The second type of transaction or transaction in Saga pattern which decides if a distributed transaction should proceed forward or stop. And as I mentioned earlier, for example, in the case of the e-commerce where we have a order service, a product service and an email service. And in this case, both order service and email service are going to be the one which are no-go. Meaning if they fail, there is no point in proceeding forward. Whereas for the email service, it might be okay to proceed forward even if it fails. So these are the second type of transaction. And the third type of transactions are transaction which are retriable as for example, an HTTP call, or even the email example I gave. If let's say we are sending an email through some sort of third party email provider, which are mostly through HTTP call, we can potentially retry them. And in retry, there is almost always a guarantee that it is going to work. Of course, if we don't have any bug in the code. Now, once we understand the transactions, let's understand the implementation. And the implementation of the Saga pattern can be done two different ways. The first way of implementation is called choreography. So what happens in choreography? In choreography implementation, each microservices communicate 
with each other through events and does not need any centralized coordinator. So let's look into a diagram. So let's say we have order service, a product service, and an inventory service, or we might have an email service also. In this case, what is going to happen is for a particular distributed transaction scenario, which involves these three service, they are going to talk to each other through events. And for the events, we can use some sort of event sync. It can be something like a RabbitMQ message broker. So what happens is when a order is completed, it is going to send an event saying order completed with an order ID. And the product service is listening to that event. So it will take that event and it will execute a product update on the product database. And then it will send a message back saying product update successful. And then inventory service will get that message and execute some inventory update and then send back a message called inventory service completed. And then it goes back to you know the caller with a successful message. There are of course some pros and cons implementing choreography. So let's understand the pros and cons of implementing choreography implementation for Saga pattern. Now the first pros is that since it don't need any centralized coordinator, it is very simple to start. If we have three or four services, think about it. It's pretty straightforward. Just sending a message saying what exactly happened and it's the responsibility of the other service to figure out how to handle it. The other pros is given there is no coordinator, there is no single point of failure. Because if a coordinator is managing all the messages, then you know you have a single point of failure. In the cons, the first one is it actually gets very complex to manage in case of large number of microservices. For example, if you I, we just discussed three, but think about if we have five or six, it becomes very complex and a lot of documentation outside of the services would be needed to understand which message is going where and how individually each one is handling the request and who is going to fall back, how the rollback is going to happen. It tend to become really complex after some point in time. And of course, the integration test becomes really complex since all microservices must be up and running for an end-to-end -end integration test of the system. That makes it a little bit harder. The next implementation for Saga pattern is through something called as orchestration. Now, as the name suggests, in the orchestration implementation, there is a centralized orchestrator who is responsible for managing the transaction. The orchestrator tells each microservice which operation to perform. And in case of any issue with any of the microservices, it also sends message to different microservices for rollback of the transaction. It manages the state. And, and if you think about it, if an orchestrator is doing it, it has to have some sort of state machine because it needs to know the state of each of the microservices which has executed before. So it manages a state of each of the tasks through a state machine. And if we have to show, in terms of diagram, it looks very similar. But here, instead of event going through some sort of event bus, there is an orchestrator who is responsible for calling each service and then managing the state of the service. Now here, not necessarily the service call has to be through HTTP. They can also be through some sort of event bus or a message broker like RabbitMQ, and they can be asynchronous. But the orchestrator is the one who understands the state of each service and manages the rollback or roll forward and is a centralized place for figuring out whether a transaction is successful or unsuccessful. Now, just like the previous implementation, this implementation also have some pros and cons. So the first pros is it is highly scalable since individual microservices does not have to talk to each other. It is easier to add new microservices and still handle the orchestration really easily. Whereas if we had the previous pattern of choreography, now all the services have to change themselves to manage the event differently, which is not needed in this case. And the second one is there is no possibility of cyclic dependency between microservices because the microservices does not directly talk to each other and it makes them a little bit more single responsible and not aware of other microservices around them. So that's a pretty neat feature.
and in terms of cons given that there is only a single coordinator it introduces a single point of failure and of course the implementation becomes complex due to state management as well as coordinating transaction but if we are using a product like mass transit it becomes really simple implementing the saga design pattern and this is what i am going to talk in my next video so that is all i wanted to cover today i wanted to make sure i go through the saga design pattern before getting into the code and implementing it so that we understand what is the philosophy of this design pattern and where it is really helpful i hope you like this video if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel and if you think you will get value out of my channel please subscribe to my channel thanks so much for watching this video